So let's look at this practical system where we've got, say, Lake Ontario and we've got a water treatment plant. We've got our pump here and we'd like to get this water up to the top of a hill and into a tank against some pressure because the tank is pressurized. We know that we'd like to get a particular flow rate up the hill, so that's going to define what we need to get out of the pump. So to solve this problem, we'll take our usual approach. We'll have location one, a place where we can define it easily, and location two, usually at opposite ends of the pipe. We'll write Bernoulli's equation, Z1 plus P1 over rho G plus V1 squared over 2G plus whatever amount of head we added at the pump must be equal to whatever we've got at 2, Z2 plus P2 over rho G plus V2 squared over 2G plus whatever we lost along the way. Head losses due to friction, head losses due to minor losses in fittings and, and valves and whatever else we might have along the way. Now usually we'll wind up just canceling out that velocity term. And we can get away with canceling that out either because it really is zero or because we're going to soak it up in our minor losses. So if we had entry losses here or exit losses there, that would account for the fact that we were losing, for example, all of the kinetic energy in the flow when it came out of here. So as a result, we can figure out what head rise we require across this pump in order to satisfy the system requirements. So to be clear about the difference between what the pump can do and what the system requires, we're going to start talking about the required pump head for the system to operate, that is what the pipe needs in order to get the flow that we're looking for, as the delta H for the system, the head rise required for the system, and that's going to be equal to the pump head that we get out of our analysis of what's happening in the piping and tankage and so on. So that's equal to delta H pump from the equation up here, the Bernoulli's equation. We're going to have Z2 minus Z1. So the amount by which we go up the hill, this delta Z, that's Z2 minus Z1. We need to have enough increase in head across the pump to overcome that elevation difference. Likewise, if there's a pressure difference, we'll need to have P2 minus P1, if there's a higher pressure at P2, divided by rho G, increase in head to overcome the pressure difference if the pressure is higher in this tank than it was over here at atmosphere. Now those together represent useful work against either elevation or pressure differences. In addition, we've got the loss terms over here. We've got head loss due to friction and minor losses. Now those represent friction or minor losses and they dissipate energy. Now, this elevation change, none of this tankage or the lake level is moving, at least not much. So that elevation change is a constant, and for a given application, that pressure difference is a constant. So these will be constant. No matter what the flow rate is, it's always going to have to overcome that change in height and change in pressure. On the other hand, we know that these losses depend on the flow rate. They depend on Q, and they're typically proportional. We've always got V squared over 2G in those loss terms. So it depends on how fast the fluid is moving. FL over D plus sigma K V squared over 2G. And that velocity is proportional to the flow rate. So our loss terms are going to be proportional to flow rate squared. So let's think about what this system head rise looks like for different flow rates. And we can draw a graph like this. We'll put delta H cis on the vertical axis and flow rate out here on the horizontal axis. Now, if we have no flow, there'll be no losses, but we'll still have to have enough head rise in, to overcome this elevation difference and this pressure difference. 
before we'll get any flow at all. So at low flow or no flow, we're still going to have to overcome Z2 minus Z1. So let's say that's that much. And we're also going to have to overcome P2 minus P1 over rho G. Let's say that's that much. If we don't have that much head rise across the pump, then there will be no flow. Now if we have, in addition, we have some flow, there will be losses due to friction and minor losses. So let's say we're up to here now at this flow rate. We've got an elevation difference, a pressure difference, and we've also got delta HF plus delta HM. It will be lower at low flow rates, and it will go up as the square of the flow rate. So when I get to here, I'll be up to there. And I'll wind up with a curve that looks something like this, and on up that way. So at every operating point, at every different flow rate, we still have this constant elevation difference that we have to overcome. We have this constant pressure difference that we have to overcome, no matter what the flow rate is. And we have this increasing uh, head loss due to friction and minor losses that the higher the flow rate goes, the higher the pump head rise required across the, the pump is to overcome that friction. So when we take the whole collection, this is the total system head rise required in order to overcome elevation difference, pressure difference, and the losses along the way. And we can use that to figure out how the pump has to behave in order to meet the requirements of the piping system. We'll go back a little later and find out how the pump actually can behave and where we're going to find a solution where the what the pump can do matches what this system requires in order to figure out just what flow rate will we have overall when we put the two of them together.